Hello, in uh, this video then, we're going to start looking at ways to bring together all of the um, watercolour skills that you might have been learning. So, you might have done a watercolour landscape where you were scraping the, um, uh, the paint and you were also um, uh, wetting the paper first with clear water and putting paint on it and then blending it in. So you might have done one of those, you might have done a graded tone. Um, where it's all one colour, you might have done that one. You might have explored different ways to add lots of texture um, with paint, paint splatters, for example, blowing the paint, um, sticking leaves on, um, and other objects like cling film, for example, salt and so on. Uh, you might have overlaid colours as well. You might have done the uh, uh, lesson or the look at the video about the um, uh, colour wheel and looked at uh, how to use complementary colours. Uh, you might have turned some of your paint splurges uh, into funny little drawings. Um, for example, you might have explored different types of mark making um, as well with a watercolour brush. Um, so, uh, there are lots of different ways that we can bring those things together. Um, I'm going to show you a few. So the first one I'm going to show you is um, making a um, self-portrait. So, in one of my other uh, videos, you might have learned how to draw a self-portrait. Um, and when we did that, what we did was we got photocopies of them. So here's a photocopy of the self-portrait from that video. And then to transfer the photocopy into your sketchbook or onto watercolour paper or just thicker paper than photocopy paper, all you do is you shade in the back wherever all the lines are, hold it up to the light and check that you've, um, um, you've shaded in on the back where the lines are on the front. And then I just put put this drawing down and pressed hard and did all of the outlines. No colouring, no shading, just outlines only. And that left me with a face there, which I went over uh, with my pencil um, a bit more, but not too hard. Um, and then what I did was I just put some um, shapes on there. So um, what I'm doing is I'm letting, I'm, uh, I'm letting myself be influenced by um, some of these artists here. So what we've got here is a painting by uh, Vasily Kandinsky, who was a Russian artist who was around about 100 years ago. Um, in fact, all of these are about 100 years ago, maybe 110, something like that. Um, and this is by an artist called um, uh, August Macker, who was a German artist. Um, and this is by Sonia Delaunay, who was a French artist. Right, so the top one and the bottom one, are both abstract paintings. What do we mean by abstract? Well, uh, abstract paintings, they have different shapes, different forms in them. I'm sure you can see circles and kind of uh, quadra uh, quadrilaterals there and uh, triangles and semicircles and lots of circles here. Um, they don't have to be geometric shapes like this. They could be any kind of wiggly shape, for example, um, as well. Um, yeah, but the, in an abstract painting, you don't see forms or shapes that you would um, that you would recognize from nature. Uh, we just see um, all sorts of different random shapes uh, in abstract paintings, or sometimes no shapes at all, just pure colour uh, put down. Uh, the one in the middle, um, I would call that semi-abstract. Um, so semi-abstract means that um, when, you, when you look at it from a distance, it might just look like a lot of shapes put together, but when you look more closely, of course, you can see people, people wearing hats. It's called the yellow jacket. So there's a lady in a yellow jacket there wearing a hat. There's faces you can see here, you can see people there. This looks like a lady with a red hat or perhaps a red umbrella. Um, and this looks like it might, these might be trees, might be sky. Um, but the artist has simplified these shapes to make it appear as if it's uh, almost abstract. Um, and another thing I like about these pictures is um, their use of complementary colours. So uh, you can see it in the circles, you can see green placed, uh, placed next to red, you can see uh, blue and orange. Uh, placed next to each other. Over here, look, you've got purple and yellow placed next to each other as well, green and red, and it happens a lot um, in the Kandinsky picture uh, too. So these are just some examples. And what I've done then is I've just done uh, some random lines. I've done some um, circular lines, a bit like the Sonia Delaunay picture there. You can see them there. Done that. And I've done some straight ones, like in the Kandinsky picture with a ruler. I haven't done many. Uh, I've probably done oof, maybe 10 lines total. If you do lots and lots, then you're leaving yourself with a ton of work. 
Um, and so then all I'm going to, going to do is use some of these skills that I've been practicing uh, already um, in the different areas. So now what I've got is I've got a lot of random shapes, haven't I? Um, um, on which to place colour, basically. So that's what I am going to do. Right, here it is so far. So what have I done so far? Well, I've done a single color graded tone. You can see there, I've done some complementary colors. There's blue and orange, there is red and green. I've tried to blend the red into the green. So I've got two colors blended. Uh, I've done a bit of that there, a bit like the color wheel, if you um, saw that video. Uh, more complementary colors um, here. And um, uh, yeah, so I'm ready to keep going with it. So um, what I would say is with really fiddly bits like the eyes, I wouldn't bother trying to paint the, um, the pupils. I would just get your pencil. No need to try and paint them. Uh, if you want to redo any outlines with the pencil, then you can, but it's not, uh, you don't need to. If, for example, if you, you've used a dark colour on the nose and you can't see the nostrils anymore, then by all means, put the nostrils back in. Um, same with the eyebrows. You could do that in paint or you could just gently draw them on. And I like to smudge a bit. Um, okay. Um, next step then, I was just here painting the neck green. If it's not green enough, for you, if the colour's not bold enough, just put more on. 
It just means that I had too much water on the brush, that's all it is. And you can see I've done green across the whole of the neck, even though there's all sorts of different shapes here. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six shapes there. You could put one color in every shape, I suppose, like a color in this shape here, one in there, one in there, but you don't have to. You can uh, set yourself that goal if you want to, but um, you don't have to. And look at that, I've just got less water on the brush and more paint from the palette and already it's uh, it's more interesting because it's uh, it's more more of a vibrant green and look it's going from it's going from dark uh, to light okay and then as it gets over to here it crosses this shape and I'm gonna do one of our other scales which was overlaying uh, two different colors which was those wasn't it so I'm gonna have a go at that I'm gonna overlay a color over that green i'm gonna i think i'm gonna start by a light using a lighter color i'm gonna overlay yellow so start with yellow here it's nearly dry not quite dry it probably work better if it's bone dry but we're experimenting let's see Oh, yeah, it's worked. See, it's made um, it's made a thin yellow layer over the green, which changes the tone of the green, and then back into yellow on the other side. I think that has worked really well. Right, I'm going to get into looking at um, some of the other things that uh, that we've tried. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of spraying. If I can find the brush there it is. So I'm gonna get this um, hogshead brush and just do that a little bit, uh, do a bit of spraying. I think I'll do it in this corner down here. I don't want, I don't want it to go across the whole thing, I think. So yeah, I'm gonna go and do it down in this corner. First of all, I'll just fill in this corner with some colors. Right, stop it going everywhere. I'm gonna get some paper towels. I'll put the paper towels over where I don't want it to go. Any paper would do though, any scrap paper, anything would do. Okay, so now it's restricted to this um, area down here. It's the only place it's gonna go, so there we go. Get more on the brush if it's not dark enough, so you can get a range of tones with that. Um, Okay, I'll leave it like that. Take that off. And there you go, it's more or less only gone down into that corner. So we've added some texture into that corner then. Down here, I'm just going to wet the paper first with clean water. I'm taking care, I'm working quickly, but I'm taking care to not go over the edges where there's uh, other paint, like that green edge or that yellow edge or the blue there, just so that they don't bleed into each other. That might be something that you want to do in yours, so you should give that a go if that's something you would like to do. Right, so uh, then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drip some colors um, into it. So just do this, a few dots. brush again I'm gonna do some other dots now yellow ones you can see the paint starting to blur and spread itself out into the water that's already there you have to work quickly because it does dry quite quickly sometimes okay that will spread out and do its own thing so I've done red, and in fact I've done red and yellow. Let's go all primary colors, shall we? Okay, 
Okay, so we've put paint onto wet paper. All the other bits are paint on dry paper. So this is different. I'll let that dry. And then I might decide that uh, I want to go over it because it's white and, um, and put thin color over the top. Uh, we will see. Okay, um, so next I'm gonna try dry brush, I think. Okay, I'm gonna go for a color I haven't used yet, which is this kind of reddish brown here. So I have to load the brush with lots of paint. And then I have to blot it a bit to get some of the water off. And then I'm gonna try and make some. It's a little bit wet. There we go. I'll try and make some dry brush texture in this area here. And there will be white bits underneath because when it's dry brush, it doesn't cover everything because the brush is nearly dry. I don't quite like that. And I'll let it go over the edge into the blue, tiny bit, and over the edge into this green. A little bit. Okay, so there's dry brush. I'll try and scribble in that. No, it's too dry to do that. Okay, so I've done dry brush. Uh, next one I'm gonna have a go at is scrape. And you know what? While that's wet, it'd be interesting to see what happens when I scrape it with a ruler. Let's give it a go. Here we go. Oh, yeah, quite like that. Do you know what? I won't scrape all of it. Or will I? Let's see. Yeah, I think I will. There you go. I'll let it bleed across. in the other direction as well. See if that does anything. Not really, I think one direction was good enough. Could put some marks with the ruler in there maybe. Add some texture down there. Right, I like I like that. It's a bit faint now, but I do like it. Uh, so I'll leave that for now. Um, okay, uh, so I've done dry brush and done scrape. Uh, salt is one that I haven't done, so I'll try that in the hair. It might, it might not make much of an effect, we'll see. Um, you might have noticed that I haven't used uh, much, um, well, I haven't used black at all. You can if you like, but um, I like to keep the colors nice and vibrant, he says as he's putting brown on. But uh, brown is one of the few colors I haven't really used yet, so I'm putting that on. Now, if you've got long hair, you might decide to, to paint the ears, or you might decide to just cover the ears with the long hair. Doesn't really matter. Okay, I could make the brown go over this bit, but I don't, I, I, I prefer to leave that as it is. Okay. Okay, I'll make some watery. I'm gonna make bits a bit darker though. So we've got some contrast in there. In fact, I might just dab, make it textured. Dab the darkness in. There we go. Get some salt in that then. Always put a, a little bit in your hand first. A tiny bit will do. And just sprinkle it on. There we go. And a bit of salt, we'll see what that does. Um, okay, so you get the idea. We've got, um, what have we done? We've done scraping, 
smooth on dry brush over here. Uh, we wet the paper first um, and did blots on there. We've done spraying. Um, we've done a single colored uh, graded tone there, going from dark to light. We've done it again over here. And um, we've put complementary colors next to each other. We've blended from one color uh, into another color as well. And we've sprayed um, as well. So as you can see, there's only a few white bits uh, left. So I'll just put some um, color into those and um, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so nearly there, as you can see, there's just a little white bit left there. I've decided um, in the face, it needs kind of warming up uh, a bit more. So this yellow here, I'm gonna let it come over. Add another layer, add a bit more interest to it. And that should warm up this lighter part of the face. Now, as I get further and further over to the red on this side, what I do is I don't get any more paint on my brush. I just put water on it and look, it'll just blend it all together. And there you go. Okay, so um, I just need to fill in that bit there. And just, I think just put a blob of, that's supposed to be blue. Uh, and it's at this point that you just want to have a look at it and think to yourself, right, what's working for me? What do I need to change? What do I like? What don't I like? Uh, so first of all, when I look at it, this dry brush bit here, it's, um, it seems a bit flat for dry brush. So I think what I'll do is I'll get the darker brown and to try and add a bit of interest to that, I will just make my brush virtually dry again and see if I can. There we go. Add a bit more texture to that. Yeah, it's a bit different now. Um, yeah. Um, okay, and um, yeah, the other bit that I didn't uh, do yet was um, was blowing any paint and um, I had to think about it and I thought well when you blow it you don't know where it goes but uh, here is where there's lots of texture and I thought rather than um, disturb all this area up here with their uh, blowing paint I'll just blow paint down here as well so I um, I flipped red paint so let's go with um, a different color uh, let's see let's go with some blue then If I just move the book over a little bit, check that that's on the camera, just about. Um, and I'm gonna redo this blue bit here, just a bit, just so there's enough paint to blow, that's all. Okay, let's see if that'll move for us. get these spidery arms coming out don't you okay now you might look at that and think don't like it if you don't like it fine all you got to do don't wipe it never wipe just dab if you don't like it just dab um, and you can paint over those bits I'm gonna dab them but I think I'm gonna leave them there just I've dabbed them just to lighten them in tone a little bit that's all okay all right so um, other things that you might decide to do, um, which is a trick that uh, Kandinsky used and a lot of other artists too, is, I don't know if you can tell here, he's put a darker tone behind a lighter tone. And what it does is it pushes the lighter tone forward. It makes it look like that semicircle there is being pushed forward. Same over here. It makes it look like that circle there has been pushed forward and here as well. Um, this triangular shape here looks like it's in front of this dark shape behind and that's all through uh, the use of tone. 
So um, you could just do that with your ordinary sketching 2B pencil. And I'm gonna have a practice, first of all, over here. So I've got, I'm holding the pencil like that, and I'm just gonna press hard and then go lighter and lighter. All right, so you might find that there are areas where you want that to happen. So for me, I'm thinking, first of all, the hair here. So next to the face, I want the face to come forwards and the hair to go backwards. So start off with a dark line right next to the face there. And then I just get lighter and lighter and lighter and then stop. Smudge it with your finger, that pushes the face forward. You might want to do the same. I could carry that round and come under the chin. I tried, as you might be able to see there, with green paint to push the face forward. But if I just do some lines there, they get lighter and lighter and lighter, smudge them, and there you go, that pushes the face um, forwards. Um, you could even try and make this part of the face uh, come forwards compared to this part of the face. Might be an interesting thing to do. If you don't like it, you could, because it's just pencil, you could use a rubber very gently and it might lift some of the paint off. But you know what? I like that. I think that looks okay. Um, okay, so you might want to just use it to um, re-establish some of the outlines you want some of the outlines to be stronger, um, perhaps the shape of the eyes, or the eyelids. I'll just do the top actually. Yeah, um, I think I wasn't very successful with the ears, so I'm gonna go and put that dark shadow next to the ears a little bit as well. Might work a little bit. There we go. Still got some of that salt on there. It's produced a nice texture in the end. Okay, so this pencil bit you might choose to do. You might not choose to do. All these textures that we've used and all these ways of applying the paint, I've I've tried to use as many as possible, but you might not want to use all of them. Um, it's entirely um, up to you. Okay, so that is it. That is one way to use um, some, or most here, <laughs> of, your, of the watercolour uh, techniques. And we've combined it with, um, with the portraits that you might have already drawn if you've looked at the portraits uh, video. So have fun with that. Looking forward to seeing what you can do.